In this video tutorial, I'll be looking at uh, a finite element analysis of an I-beam using beam elements. Uh, this I-beam that I've selected for this example has got a cross section that is 200 millimeters high and 100 millimeters wide, and the flange and the webs are constant 10 millimeters thick. Uh, we can easily calculate the surface area, the second moment of area of this I-beam. The load on this is 10,000 newtons applied at the right hand, and the beam is fully fixed at the left end. We are also going to expand on this load set. We'll try to create a gravity load as well as a uniform distributed load at the top surface. We will be using Creo Simulate to create our beam finite element analysis. First we start by selecting our working directory and it's defined as a folder on my workspace and I can create a, a new model, a new part and just call it iBeam1 let's say. And We need to first of all make sure we are using consistent set of units. So let's change our units to millimeters, newtons, seconds and also apply our material and in this case I'll try one of the low carbon steels for this problem. And close that. Um, what I want to do is select one of the datum planes and sketch on that. So the first sketch will be a, a single line starting from the center, extending a distance and finish that and I'll give that a distance of a thousand millimeters and that will be my first sketch and I also need to add another sketch on the same plane and I'll again add a line starting from the previous line location which was here and extending another thousand millimeters. So add the dimension for that as well. So that effectively is um, the two lines defined that I can use to define my beam element. I use two different lines because on the right hand later I'll apply uh, my uniform distributed load. So that gives me a convenient location to distribute a force on this beam. So let's then go to applications, simulate and then define our beam. If you go to Refine Model and Beam, we can define beam sections. A new section and we wanted an I-beam. To make our I-beam fit the dimensions that I have got in my model, so B in this case is 100, T is 10, DI is 180 and TW is also 10. 10. So I can review this and the review gives me the properties of this um, these cross section. So on this cross section I can see uh, the dimensions that I've entered as well as the area, the polar moment of inertia as well as the moment of inertia with respect to the principal coordinate system. So this um, is the main beam bending direction that we are using. So that has got uh, 22 E6 um, millimeters to the power of 4 for our moment of inertia for that cross sectional area. So we can close the review and we can give it a specific name if you wanted, but we'll just review. We will just keep that at the moment, press OK and then close 
and next we can apply uh, our beam sections onto these lines. So this curve um, reference the edges and curves, I can use that to select the left part of the line and then um, I can select my material and I can say orient my beam with the Z axis, so the Y axis, the local axis of the beam is now going to orient with the Z direction and beam section is defined here, that's the one I beam I've just defined um, so I'll click OK to that and it gives a, a 3D representation of what this beam will look like so that is now added to my idealizations you can see that it's added there as beam 1 now I'll add the second beam and the second beam beam 2 again geometric reference is referring to the second line I've created and again I'll change that to 0 and change that to 1 so the y direction local axis of the beam is going to align with the z axis of the global Cartesian system so press OK on that after I select the material so you can see that that's beam 2 and that's beam 1 defined and see these are my two um, effectively um, beam idealizations I only needed to create two lines to define these two um, sections really these two beams now we are ready to apply some loads on this um, first of all let's go back to home and fix displacements on the left end so I want to select um, a point and that point is the centroid effectively here the center of the um, Cartesian coordinate system and X, Y, Z are fixed and rotations are fixed and I can say OK to that and I can then apply my load which is a force applied on a point and that point is uh, the right hand so the value of the force was in the negative Z direction 10,000 so I can preview that I'm uh, happy that it's going in the right direction and then um, I can press OK and I can solve this particular problem if I go to analysis and studies define a new static analysis um, you can see my beam constraint and beam load set I've defined multipass adaptive in this case um, increase the maximum polynomial order to 9 and percentage convergence to 5 and that's my analysis when defined and I can start solution I can click on this button and I can see how this uh, analysis has progressed so on, after just two passes it's converged fine and it gives me some brief information about the analysis I can close that and go and look at my results so review results and I want to see um, first of all the von Mises stresses and I'm getting a value of 87 megapascals at the base of the beam and that is again what I was expecting so going back to my evaluation calculations using engineers beam bending formula that's um, correct so I can look at the beam bending stresses and they're effectively the same as the von Mises stresses because there's no additional loads on this at the moment I can click on edit and then look at my display options click deformed and with the undeformed um, and OK and show and it shows me that it's displacing in the correct direction and I can also create animations just to see how it's behaving so 
that looks fine. The next thing I want to do is stop the animation and I can create a, another type of plot. So I can use the same analysis, analysis 1, and um, instead of a fringe plot I can select a graph plot. And in the graph plot I can select shear and moment graph. So I don't want P or MX or MY on the local coordinate system of these beams. What is interesting is the shear in the Y direction and the moment in the Z direction. These are not the global Y and Z but the local beam Y and Z directions. So graph location I can select the two lines and make sure I click on this little dialog box OK. You can change where this graph starts from so in this case it's going to start from the left hand so that's fine press OK and if I do OK and show what I can see is on the top graph there is the shear force and that effectively shows that on the whole of the beam the shear force in the y direction of the beam is minus 10,000 which is effectively the same as the load that I have applied on the tip so that's correct and the bending moment you see the bending moment diagram on the right here on the right bottom and at the right hand of the beam where I apply the load there is effectively zero bending moment and the maximum bending moment in the negative direction is at the left hand and that is um, 2E7 so if you can calculate the applied 10,000 newtons here and the beam is 2,000 millimeters long so the maximum moment at the root must be 2,000 times 10,000 so that gives us 20 million so that bending moment diagram is correct as well. The next step in our analysis we can close that we don't need to save it just now um, we can close that as well and we want to apply a gravity load and some uniform distributed load as well so the gravity load is simply applied through that toolbar button and what we want to do was well, let's say give this a name gravity and I don't want it on the same load set but I want to create a new load set just give it a name gravity load set press OK and the components in the acceleration um, that gravity load is going to be in the negative z direction and it's easy to enter it in meters per second square so I know that my gravitational constant is 9.81 meters per second square I can preview it I can see that that's how it's applied on the left end but I need to make sure it's negative so it's downwards preview and that's fine and press OK so if you go to the left on your feature table you can see that we've got a load set gravity defined and that's our gravity value and that's our previous load which was a tip load and we can change the name of these just to make it more descriptive and we can change the name of this load set as well uh, let's change that to tip load and the other thing I wanted to add was a uniform distributed load so that is effectively a load that is going to be applied on the right hand. On that I can create a force and that force is going to be applied on effectively the, uh, the line. So we need to select that particular line so that is selected and the component is in the Z direction and the value I'm going to try is minus, ten minus 1000 newtons downwards 
So preview that, and it's going in the right direction. And I can give it a, a new name. So let's call this a new load set called UDL, Uniform Distributed Load. And the name of the load, I can change that to UDL as well. And that should be fine. Let's say OK. And now on the left, you can see on the feature tree, UDL is also defined. The next thing to do is solve this. When you try to solve this, this time you need to go and edit your study. And in the study you will see that these are the two um, load sets that we have defined. The gravity load and the UDL, uniform distributed load, as well as the previous tip load. And we are going to solve it for all these we aren't going to sum them at this stage, we can do that at the post-processing stage, at the review stage. So we want multipass, up to 9 polynomial order and 5% convergence. That's fine, press OK, and then click to start analysis. And that's going to overwrite, that's fine. And it should again solve in a few seconds. That's completed. And I can now go and edit my results. Um, now it's asking which load sets do you want to include in your review. So I'm including all of these. And I want to do a, a fringe plot of stress and von Mises. So if I do OK and show, now that I can see my stress has increased to 96 megapascals at the root of the beam. That now also includes the gravitational effect and the uniform distributed load. And we can do a contour plot uh, of these uh, in the banding direction. And that's effectively the same. The next thing to do is again open a new uh, graph and rather than a fringe plot. So we can do a graph and um, we want to see, instead of a stress plot, shear and moment. And again, I'll select just the VY and MZ. And I'll define my curve. And my curve is going to be these two lines again. And I need to make sure I click on this. And then also press OK to accept starting from left. And if I click OK and show, this is now showing me how the shear force changes and also how the bending moment changes. So the bending moment and the shear forces are increased as I expected. Um, so there is the uniform distributed load as well as the weight of the beam and that is included in the shear force now. The other thing that we can do when we create these type of plots is uh, scale these. So we can try to look at the effect of maybe scaling the uniform distributed load. So if the uniform distributed load was uh, instead of 1000 newtons per um, meter, if I change that to um, 2000, I can do that. I can click the scaling and then edit that number and if I OK and show again, that now includes the uniform distributed load effectively doubled. Because this is a linear elastic analysis, I can sum different load cases and scale them up. And that is a convenient way of looking at what is the effect of different parts, different loads from gravity, from uh, concentrated forces, from pressures, from uniform distributed loads and um, you can get a quick uh, display of the results without actually going and solving the problem again um, in our CREO uh, simulate model. So this concludes our um, beam analysis for a simple cantilevered uh, beam problem.